And welcome everybody. This is the 1230 Rowdy Bunch. <laughs> Today we're going to do Dust in the Wind by Kansas. And uh, this is going to be a fun class today. It's going to be rather easy. I do have a handout for you. I'm going to give you an insert. So watch Patreon for that because I think this is going to absolutely make the song. Easy Play is a wonderful thing because it gives us a great guide to follow. And again, we had this discussion this morning. The most important thing to playing a song that's close to the original is finding the correct music style or rhythm. That is the most important thing, the left part of your organ. Once you have that, everything else can be tweaked to fit. So once you have that, it's your drummer, it's your bass player. Sometimes you have to change your drummer. You have a, if you have a drum variation, sometimes you have to go from auto bass one to auto bass two to get something. Don't forget, if you have alter style, that can also tweak your background to make it work exactly for you. And then adding the sounds, that's just the easy part. But getting that background to sound right, it might be adding a golden harp, it might be taking some of the instrumentation out. So sometimes less is more. And uh, that's the, I'm trying to turn you into active listeners. So if you go to YouTube or you ask Siri to play the song for you, you have to listen not just to the whole song and say, oh, what a great song. Now we have to start picking it apart. What is the bass player doing? Is he doing a, a country type of a, of a background? Boom. Boom, boom, boom. That would be a country bass player. Not all of them, but that's, it's very typical. Um, is it a walking bass, like a big band? Boom, 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 boom. That would be like a walking bass. Um, or is it a bass player just doing something? Boom, 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 like a rock eight beat. So you're listening for those types of things so that you know where to start. The other thing you're listening for is the drummer. What beats are the drummer really hitting on? Is it two and four? Is it one and three? Is it, is it just kind of a, a tip, 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 tip? Is it, is it eight? So you gotta kind of watch for bass and drums. Once you have those two, the rest of it can kind of fill in. Are you doing, is it, is it a guitar strum? Like this morning we did one where the guitar strum was on the first beat and the fourth beat. So it was one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So you're listening for those types of things to get your background right. So that that's sometimes can be the hardest part. And it does take some time to search your instrument to see what you have. And the more you do that, the more you go, aha, you know what? I just found a background that's not going to work for this song, but let me make a note of it because you know what? That's perfect for another song that I was thinking about the other day. So yeah, it's to help you also get to know what your instrument can do for you. All right, what do we know about Dust in the Wind? This was 1977. That's the year I graduated from high school. Woohoo! <laughs> so it's a song by Kansas. Um, Kansas is considered an American progressive rock band, and it's from their album Point of No Return. The song peaked at number six on the Billboard Hot 100 in 1978, making it their only single to reach the top ten in the United States. The title of the song is actually a Bible reference, paraphrasing Ecclesiastes. It is a meditation on mortality and the inevitability of death. It also bears a resemblance to Genesis 3.19, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The guitar line was actually started as a finger-picking exercise for Mr. Kerry Livgren, one of the, the, the guitarists in the group, and his wife one day was listening, and she goes, oh, that's a nice melody. Why don't you write some lyrics to that? But it was totally outside the realm of what Canvas, uh, Kansas had been doing at that time that he was a little bit um, apprehensive about bringing it up to the bandmates. So they were in the middle of doing a recording session, and he said, hey, I've got something for you. And he had made a rough recording of the whole thing. And the rest of the guys were like, where have you been hiding this? That's our next hit. 
So, yeah, and it was their, their only hit that made the top ten. And it's funny because it was just one of those things that started out as a finger exercise, just a guitar picking things or finger exercise. Pretty cool stuff to know about your songs. Okay, so what type of music styles or rhythm backgrounds are going to work for this, since this is the most important thing? My favorite was actually contempo folk style. Or on the larger instruments, it's called basic folk. And your sounds that come up on rhythm preset zero are guitars and flutes. Guitars and flutes, that's the sound. And that's just rhythm preset zero. Your tempo is anywhere between 85 and 90. But what else does work? Soft rock, again, slowing it down to 85 to 90. Take your orchestra plus out. Or just go to rhythm preset number one, that'll work. Basic rock will also work. Rhythm preset one, which again takes out the orchestra plus so it's not quite so heavy. And then play your lower keys, which is a flute. It's already there. Guitar standard. For those of you that have pianist and guitarist backgrounds, guitar standard preset number 10 puts that drummer in there. And if you are on one of the smaller instruments, Smooth Guitarist is perfect on this. On the Freedom 3, Mellow, Smooth 16 beat. Or Gospel Guitar Heaven is perfect on this one. Okay? And again, your sounds, either guitar combined with a flute for your melody, or just a guitar or just a flute. Now, you're also going to have a violin insert. And you can do one of two things. You can either go to your geniuses and after you find the sound that you want on top, put in a new sound on the bottom to find a violin. Or if you've got these nice A, B, C, D, and E banks, the D bank is orchestral sounds. And D bank number two is going to give you a beautiful violin on top and a cello on the bottom. And it's that violin that we're looking for because they used an electric violin for the insert. Now, where does the insert come? Well, first of all, let's follow the road map. If we don't do the road map, that's going to be a little hard to. Road map. You're going to do the first verse, which takes you to first ending. The bottom line of page 88 has a first ending and then you have some dots so you want to take your highlighter I'm gonna make mine pink and then go back to the dots at the beginning to pick up verse 2 verse 2 when you get to the end of the third line I'm gonna put a 2 and I'm gonna trace the 2 for the second ending because what you're gonna do is skip the first ending and go to the second ending then that's an open bracket, which means you're going to keep playing. Well, it, you keep playing to the end of the top line. Okay. Now, you have a DS Alcoda. I want you to cross that out. Because what you're going to do is you are going to write insert. Insert. And then I'm, you're going to play your insert. And then you're going to do a DS Alcoda. So at the end of the insert, you're going to go back to the silly sign. Where's the silly sign? Back to the same place that the pink dots were. And then you need another color. Oh, my. I don't have another color. I have to use green again. You're looking for the two coda. So when you play verse 3, if you follow the lyrics, you have three sets of lyrics on line 3. And then you have the two coda sign, and you only have two sets of lyrics in that next measure, which means you're at the end of the third verse. So it says two coda. Make that a different color. Now you're going to jump across the page to the coda. Coda means tail, final ending, and play the last line of music. So the only difference is the insert. You're going to insert after you get to the end of line one on page 89. Can't see because I got a paper clip in the way. Play the insert, then do the DS Alcoda back to the beginning, 
play the first two lines and one measure and jump to the coda. All right. Now I've made three different presets for mine because I made a preset of D2 and put it, so all I have to do is do a one button push. I don't want to do a two button push here. I only want to do a one button push. So I saved some presets. I can do it with my foot or I can just reach up and push. I do have a few chords, but very few. This is actually a fabulous um, arrangement just the way it is. So I'm going to play it first, then I'm going to go over some chords. And maybe I'll even try it on a different background, although I really think that this was the best one. That was very pretty. Not pretty? This is a pretty song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really pretty song. You know what I'm noticing? Yeah, I left, I left that door. I don't want the door to come back. Okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the first time I played it, if you're on contempo folk style and you're using that guitarist and flute, I took the duet off for the first part and played it in the lower octave for the first time. I went up the octave the second time, still with no duet. Then I went to the insert, which is the violin. Or if you decided to put that on the bottom, then you'd only have to just bring your hand to the bottom. And then for the last time I played it, I added the duet back in. So not a lot of different button pushing and changes that I did. So that actually worked very well. As far as extra chords, get out your pencils. Very few of them. Like I said, this is actually a really nice arrangement, right as it is. Line one. The last chord is a D minor. You may put a seven on it, which would make it C, D, and F. Line two. 
The A minor is good for three counts. Beat four, just go to the end of that measure. G as in gorilla. G, C. That's just a lead-in chord to get back to that C. Mm -hmm. The last chord in that line is a D minor. You may put a seven on it. Remember, sevens are always optional. The third line, the last measure. You have an A minor. That's good for two counts. Beat three, which is over that half rest, A minor seven. And again, that's optional because the sevens are optional, but you would just add the G. The last line, no changes. The top line of page 89, no changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty nice. The coda, second measure, you have an A minor. Good for two counts. And if you wish, beat three, you may play A minor seven. Just add the G. Third line on that page, the second line of the coda. The A minor is good for two counts. Beat three over the half rest, A minor seven. The same thing with the last measure of that line. You have an A minor. It's good for two counts. Over the half rest, A minor seven. And the last line, you're done. That's it. No changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dawn? Now what? Yeah. Dawn? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, line three, first page, mm -hmm. last, uh, last one you had the AM, did that go to two, or the A minor, did that go to an A minor seven as well? The last one, not the first one. The first one the last, just stays, yes. yeah, the first one stays the same. And it's the last one in that line. And don't ask me why, because it looks like it could have. That would be a good spot for it, too. But um, the original piece of music that I had did not have it in that spot. But it had it okay, on so the, the last only one A you minor. changed was over the, uh, the half rest, and we turned that into an A minor 7. A minor 7, correct. But yeah. that's the last measure of that line, yes. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're very welcome. Anybody else? Dawn, yeah, this is Joanne. Could Hi, you Joanne. say again how the whole thing goes as far as the road map? Yep, yep, it's verse one. So the first three lines and line four, the first two measures, because you have that first ending. Then you have some dots. The dots send you back to the dots at the top of the page. So you might want to use a color and make those the same color. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to do verse two. Line one, line two, line three. And at the end of line three, you're going to skip down to the second ending. You're skipping the first ending is really all you're doing. So I put a little colorful two and traced the two in the second ending. And I even put a little arrow so I know second time that's where I'm going. So now I'm going to do all we are is dust in the wind. Oh, I changed a note there too. Dun. Yeah, I changed that to an F. I changed one of the E's to an F. Okay, then at the end of line one, you have two thin lines, end of a section, but I want you to put in there insert. Mm -hmm. Insert, so you're gonna go from there to that little violin part. I hope you liked that. I do have, that's gonna go on Patreon for you. It's not hard, not hard at all. And that kind of makes the song. And then after you do the, this, after you do your insert, now you do DS Alcoda, which means go back to the silly sign to pick up verse 3. Verse 3, you're looking for the two coda sign, which is there in the third line. And then you're going to jump to the coda, which is the third ending or the final ending. Yep. Got it? Okay, I'll play it again so you can get it. Dawn? Yes? Which is, which is the note that you change from an E to an F? On the top of page 89, wind, it's the second E quarter note. I changed okay. that to an F. Okay, thanks. 
Mm -hmm. And I guess I just did that and didn't write it in because I'm, I'm usually just doing things by ear. This, this arrangement right here is not bad at all. There's not a lot of changes. We've seen some songs where we have to cross out and redo and undo, and this is not one of them. This is a nice, easy song, and it's pretty. It's just a pretty, pretty song. Let's, for fun, go to rock and roll. And I don't think, oh, did I put something in here? Yeah, I did. I, I put it in soft rock. But I know I didn't because I didn't change anything. All right, let's go to soft rock. And we're going to put it at 80. Let's put it at 89. That's close enough. And number one takes the orchestra plus out automatically, and it gives me a flute on the bottom. So I'm already set with a flute on the bottom. The only thing I'm going to have to do is a double push to get to my D4, um, which is my violin. But this will work as well. Now, what? Here's one for you. Which, if you're going to use an introduction, because I all I used for an intro was a no chord. So, which introduction, if you're going to use one, do you think would work on this? There's Can two you explain the difference between the two? The A minor and the C. No, the two introductions. Oh, okay. The first introduction is usually some kind of a signature introduction, and that's going to be the long one. Okay. Like, and, and soft rock is not a signature background, but you do have some that are signature backgrounds. Let's, for example, go to Fab Four. Intro one is going to be signature to the Beatles. Got it. Yeah. Now you know what song that starts, okay? So if you go to intro two, it may or may not, it's going to give you a shorter one. It's usually generic. Now because this says Fab Four, it might be a different Fab Four song. See, but that was just a short little generic introduction. So if you're not introducing that one Beatles song, you might want to go to introduction number two if you're on a signature one, like write the songs. If you go to intro one, it's going to introduce Barry Manilow, write the songs. Got it. Intro two is shorter and more generic. Now, something like soft rock, it doesn't really matter because soft rock, there, it's not a signature background, meaning it's not introducing a particular song. But you'd want to try, what does intro one do? That would work, but it's okay. It, that works. Intro two is going to be shorter. Oh. Now that's funny because that introduced uh, a whole different song. So you have to watch your intro. Sometimes I don't use an intro. If it's got its own specific one, I'll either write out my own intro or I'll just use a no chord so at least I can get the beat. And then I'll do a drum, a drum kick, like a drum solo, meaning that I'm just going to act on that no chord. Okay, and all I did was do a fill in. And then you get a little drum solo. Okay. So let's try soft rock. 88, 89, doesn't matter. Rhythm preset one is going to give me that flute on the bottom. Um, let's just see what, how that sounds. And that'll work. That'll work. Okay. What other ones did I say would work? Basic rock. If you've got a basic rock, now if you've got a symphony, um, you're going to have a symphony showcase there, and it's going to be an eight-beat rock. So just go to that one. It's the same thing. They didn't take that one away from you. And again, go to rhythm preset number one, because it turns off your Oric Plus. You don't always want all that stuff going on. Sometimes you just want 
a few things going on. That's already got the duet, so take your duet off until the third time around. So try a few different things, and I'm sure there's a hundred other ones in here that will work. So the trick is to find the one that works for you. And I just like that contempo folk style because for me, that one just hits it right off the bat. And it gives me that guitar, guitar and flute at the same time, which was very nice. Um, did you say that basic folk was the same as that contempo? Yes, basic folk is exactly the same thing, yes. And I would use preset one on that? Um, try <laughs> preset zero. I think preset zero vintage is going to give you that guitar flute combination. And that's just really pretty. Now, if you don't have that, um, either use work your geniuses or go to your category presets and find something that gives you a nice flute. Or a guitar. A nice guitar is also very nice. You don't have to have the flute playing. You could just have a guitar playing. I just happen to like that combination on this song. That works for me. You don't want anything too heavy on this. Remember what the lyrics are saying. The lyrics are biblical. The lyrics are talking about the inevitability of, of death. And what are we doing here? It's kind of the meaning of life, you know, kind of what everybody contemplates in their teens. I close my eyes only for a moment, and the moment's gone. All my dreams pass before my eyes, a curiosity, dust in the wind. Yep, that's all we are. All they are is dust in the wind. Same old song, just a drop of water in an endless sea. All we do crumbles to the ground, though we refuse to see. Meaning, hey, we're just one little speck on this earth, trying to make our way, trying to do something meaningful. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Don't hang on. Nothing lasts forever but the earth and sky. It slips away. All your money won't another minute buy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a question, Dawn. Yes. In regards to my question last week, this song, Dust in the Wind, mm -hmm. you, uh, you said verse one, verse two. Where is my melody? Your melody is the right hand. Yeah. Uh huh. But is there? Um, melody is always the right hand. Uh, right. Melody is not a section of the song. The melody is the part that you sing. That That's is the melody. Thing, right. right. Uh -huh. So yeah. I guess I'm still getting confused as to um, sections. Melody yeah. would play as what is our right hand, but what is the verse? Yeah, the verse. This is actually one of those where the verse and chorus are kind of like the same thing. Verse, chorus. Um, the, the tagline, dust in the wind, dust in the wind. That's pretty much the chorus right there. All right. they are is dust in the wind. So that whole section right there is verse, chorus. Okay. Okay. It's one of those songs that it doesn't go verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. This is one where verse and chorus are kind of the same thing. Well, let's count measures. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. That's pretty much the verse. And mm -hmm. then you have a one, two, three, four, a four measure chorus. Okay. That's kind of, if you want to take it apart that much, that would work. And then the insert is the bridge. Because that's okay. the one part that's different from everything else. And you only play that the one time. Right. Yeah, the melody is everything that your right hand is doing. That's it's always playing. the melody, unless you have okay. fake it on. Okay. Yep. I guess I'm really too much into it. Yep. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Sometimes and song songs are always meant to also break all the rules. So yeah, don't get too caught up in that. The reason to take songs apart into verse and chorus is to make it easier for you to practice in sections. Okay. And to know right. when when would be a good time to maybe change the sound or change the octave or put on a duet. Those are types of things that usually get done at the end of a verse or the end of a chorus. 
Okay. I'll talk to you more about it um, okay. tomorrow. That sounds good. Yep, we yes. can do that. Thanks. You're welcome. John, is the insert eight bars? Is the insert what? Eight bars, eight measures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually nine measures, and that's not uncommon. Sometimes nine or ten measures. The bridge usually defies the rules. Sometimes it's nine, sometimes it's ten, sometimes it's eleven. It's just the, just getting you back to getting you back to the um, the body of the song. Sometimes it goes right back to the chorus. In this case, it takes you right back to the verse. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And this is something that I did hand write out, um, and I did. I will tell you this. I did skip an additional run, so nine, ten, this one's probably 12 measures actually, and I skipped another run that you could have actually put in there because I think this was enough. I think the one run is, is enough to, to give you something extra to work on without making it too terribly hard. I'm still letting people in, wow. Okay, so I'm gonna play this again, and now follow along for where the roadmap is, because that's probably the hardest thing of this song. John, I have one quick question. Go ahead, Sue. Well, the insert is after line two, right? No, the insert is, is after line one. Oh, OK. okay. On the second page. <laughs> right, right where it says DS Alcoda, you're going to put insert instead. OK, gotcha. And then you go straight to the insert. Then at the end of the insert, and I didn't write it on here. I will before I put it on Patreon. Um, I, it's it's DS Alcoda, because okay. then that goes back to the silly sign and you're looking for the coda. Okay. So I will have to write that in there. Okay. Now, what, what, before um, I got interrupted about 10, 15 minutes ago, I was asking what the introduction actually is. Is it A minor or is it C? You have a C. last? C? Okay. I... Very rarely do you see one that starts in, these are relative, these are sister chords. They're sister chords because they share the same scale. Now you don't need to know that except it's easy to tell. A minor, what are the two notes we use? C, C and A. So C is, the, is your major, your major sister chord, and then the A minor that includes the C is the relative, <laughs> the relative. Now, some, usually what happens is it'll start with the minor and end on the major. This is one of those songs, is one of the very few songs that starts with the major and ends on the minor. Well, look at the contents that we're talking about. We're talking about death. Everything is dust in the wind. It's kind of sad if you think about it. So the chord is A minor? Is it? Yes. yes. Is it? Is it? 99 times out of 100, it is the last chord. When you have sister chords at the beginning and the end, majors and minors, try them both and see which one sounds better or neither. I chose neither because I really wanted to, to just, have, just have the drums. I just had the drums and then did a quick little drum solo and into the song. But if you try them both, let's do that. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to put on intro two, I'm on contempo, and I'm going to start it with a C chord and see if it works. That's okay, but I have a feeling the A minor is going to give it the ambiance that we're looking for in this song. So let's try an A minor chord. Ooh, I don't know. I didn't like that either because that particular one was too heavy. I thought that was too somber and too heavy for the song. So I'm choosing to do neither one of them. I'm choosing to just do a no chord so I can get my beat. And then I'm gonna do a fill in, which is gonna give me a little drum solo, like the drummer just kind of getting me in. And then I'm gonna start. Okay, see what I did? That way I'm introducing it my way. 
instead of introducing it with one of the intros that's there. And then I don't even have to worry about choosing. But when you have relative, the point being is when you have relative major and minor chords, using this, sharing the same scale, and you know because the minor chord, A minor is C and A, that C is the major, the major of it. So it's that second note in that minor chord that gives you the major, and those are sister, sister chords. So you can use either one of them, and then you just have to choose which one makes your song sound the best, or neither of them, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the one time out of 100 that you have to make a choice. You have to choose which one is going to work for you because they are different. So I'm, again, I'm just going to do my no chord. I'm going to fill in with a drum solo. pretty song. It's a very pretty song. And, and the nice thing is, this one's not that hard. Everybody can play this and be really, really successful right off the bat. You, did you stay on the upper keyboard the whole time? I was I looking at did. The what, but what I did is I, I had presets memorized. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had it memorized without the duet, the first one, and just did the lower octave, the higher octave. Then when I went to the insert, I went to number two, which is actually D2, which was my orchestral violin. D2. You, you know that your A, B, C, D, and E banks, these banks over here, if you don't have anything saved in them, they have sounds already in them. And that D bank usually gives you some orchestral sounds. Now, on the fanfare journey, Inspire, Rialto, Marquee, Check for your symphonic. You have a button over here in your category that says symphonic, and that's where you're going to find your violin. Okay, so instead of going over to, the, to your banks over here, on your A organs and your SU organs, it's going to be over here, D2, and on the fanfares and up, it's going to be symphonic, and I'm not sure which number. 
So Dawn, then you press that one and then memorize. And then, correct, what? correct. Then you, you press that one and then you memorize that into the next preset so that you have a one button push, not a two button push. So you had the first one was without the duet and then correct. The, second one, the second one was my violin. Wherever you find it, it's your violin. Your right. one, your your third one is with the duet. Oh, okay. Now, if you don't want to do that, you could just set up everything so that you have either flute and guitar top, or you're just flute if you want, or just guitar if you want, and then get your violin on the bottom. And don't forget to try a viola as well, because a viola has a little bit different tone, and every organ is different. So you want to, and every violin in the organs are different. So you want to try and see which one is going to give you the best tone and the best feel for that insert. Which, by the way, I played the first two lines, and I'll have to make this a little bit stronger. I have a repeat dot at the end of line two of my insert because I played, I played the first two lines twice. You'll see it when you get it. You'll know exactly what to do with it. Is it single notes or three, three note core? Uh... They're, they're all single notes. It's, it's all going to be just a nice melody. But there are some 16th notes, which means you have to play them kind of fast and you want to right. dance on them. But they're right in the line for the most part. That section gets played twice. Then you're going to come to this section, and this is the part where you have a run, where you have one measure of all 16th notes, and that's the one you're going to want to work on a little bit. Take them apart in groups of four. So that when you play it fast, it's a nice little finger exercise. On well, why did they leave that out of the song? Because I mean that is so pertinent to because of the sixteenth notes. They don't usually put stuff like that in easy play. Okay. That's why. <laughs> okay. Anything that might look too hard, they usually eliminate. Yeah, okay. that's what they do in easy play. Easy play usually eighth notes is going to be as as uh, fast as you get, and then it's up to you to figure out how to actually play them. And if you play, I've always I've always said this: if you play easy play exactly like it is written, you're going to sound very clunky. You're going to sound like you're just playing the notes. If you play it the way you sing it and play it the way you remember it being done, your timing on this will change a little bit, but it will flow with the rhythm style, the music style that you chose. And so that's what you're doing. This is your singing hand. You're singing along with the band. And if you think that way, or if you're the violin player, you want to think like you're the violin player, just dancing on those notes. So that, that also helps to get the feel for whatever instrument you're playing. You don't have to take a breath with the violin player, but you do want to make those notes light and just make them pop. And play that, play that measure slowly until your fingers feel comfortable, and then you know speed it up to where it needs to be. Now we're not going that fast; we're going 80, 88 beats a minute, so that's not too terribly bad, except when you have to play 64. You're playing 16th notes, so you're playing you're playing super, super lots of notes in one spot. Okay, any other questions? Don, I have one. Okay. Um, I was talking with Barb Hetfleisch last night. She called, oh. and we talked about setting up the presets, and I told her about custom three and going how to set the switches, foot switches. Mm -hmm. She said, how do I set the altar style? I said, I do not have any recollection of how altar to style, set the... Yeah, the altar style, all you have to do is when you touch altar style and you hit memorize A1, the altar style automatically does get saved. 
Okay, so you have to memorize that into yes. the preset and then you set the preset. Okay. Yeah. So yes. I drew I drew a blank. I said I have no <laughs> idea how to set that altar style on onto the foot switch. So Oh no, you can't can. set altar style on the foot yeah. switch. No, you okay. don't set altar style on the foot switch. Goes in the preset. It goes in the preset. Yeah. And use. then you can set the preset on the switch. Your your preset is next preset on the foot switch, and that will not save. Okay. That will not save. So you always have to remember, you know, you save, you save whatever your setups are. The only okay. you cannot set up is that custom three where you want to bump your next preset with your foot. Okay, I got part of that. Greg <laughs> is playing. Somebody's playing. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm going to hit mute all and then Linda. Thank you. And Linda, I'll explain it again. You cannot save your next preset on the foot. That you have to remember to turn on once you have everything set up and you say, okay, I'm going to go A1. Be sure you hit number three next preset because that just goes back to normal. Um, every time you turn the organ off. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yep. Anybody else have any questions? Okay, very good. This afternoon, there is a product workshop. Now he is doing it for Roland organs. So if any of you thought you might like a Roland organ as a second organ, just because it's completely different and it would work your brain differently, please feel free to do that. If you are somebody who has a smaller instrument, you might want to upgrade to something larger and uh, listen to the Rollins and see if you like them because we do have a couple of those available in the company right now. Um, also, this Saturday, I'm going to be doing the concert and it's at 2 o'clock and I'm going to be doing Baby Boomer songs and I'm going to play this song. This is one of them I'm going to play, but it's going to be on the Easy 4 and the Freedom 3, which are smaller instruments. Now, don't be discouraged because you have a bigger instrument and you want to hear things on a bigger instrument. If you hear a song, and I've got, how many do I have? I've got like 12, 13 songs. So we're going to be here till 5 o'clock. No. <laughs> the, the idea is to hear a song that maybe you haven't played in a while or you've never played and you go, oh, i got to have that song. So it's there for the rest of you to... Okay to maybe go, wow, I got to try that song. And I want to get the setups for my organ for that song. And then you can research and, and uh, have some fun with a brand new song. So that's what it's for. It's to get you guys actively thinking about different songs that you may not have thought about. Yep. So that's going to be 2 o'clock on Saturday. So if you're not doing anything, you're not out there playing golf, you know, come and tune in to me. Love to have you. <laughs> Join me on Saturday afternoon. I'm not bringing them. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, I are think you going to dress the part? Am I what? Oh. Are you going I, to dress the part? I thought about it. I don't know if I have long anything left. Long wig or long black wig or. Oh no! I'm not going to be witchy woman. No, I'm not going to be share. I'm not going to be witchy woman. No, I thought about it. Um, I don't really have anything. I if I had like a long. Um, wig that I could do like the Afro. You know, I had one. I don't know what happened to it. I'll have to look and see if I have one. Yeah, because I am going to do an Earth, Wind, and Fire song. So <laughs> I'm okay. going to try to do all different genres um, of baby boomers. And oh my God, trying to pick them is just hard enough. And then trying to set them up on Easy Four and Freedom Three. So I'm having fun with with some some baby boomer songs. So <laughs> <laughs> so join me for that. We'll have fun no matter. It'll be entertaining no matter if they sound good or not. It'll be entertaining, I promise you. <laughs> I will give you some fingering on this, so stick around if you need fingering. Are we What's the song for next week? Oh, good question. Oh, um, Easy by Lionel Richie. I've never done that song, but I think it should be very pretty. Because I'm easy, easy like Sunday morning. Yeah, good song. Okay. So I'll have to do some work on that one because I've never done that one before. So we'll just keep going right in order. All right. 
Um, the rest of you, go to the beach. Uh, go play. Go play Dust in the Wind. Have a wonderful time. Um, and I'll see you next time. You guys bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. The rest of you, let's do some fingering. This one's not too hard. It's a pretty easy song. B2. C1. Circle the one. That is a thumb tuck. D2. E3. So you're starting right off the bat with two, one, two. And there's a reason for that. It just keeps your hand in a good position to play the rest of the melody. G5, 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 G5. F4, E3, D2. D2, E3, E3. C1, D2, E3. G5, 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 G5. F4, E3, D2, D2, E3, E3, check mark, D4, C3, B2, A1. First ending, D4, 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 C3, B2, A1. Second ending. D4, 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 D4. Put an arrow on the C and make it a two. Otherwise, you're going to run out of fingers. D3, E4. Now, the next E, I'm changing to an F. Make it a five. E4 and D3. Check mark. The O's. Whatever fingers you want. I've got F2, G3, A4, but those fingers stand alone, so whichever three you want to use is fine. Um, then you go to your interlude. I did not finger the interlude. I think you guys can figure it out for yourself. If you can't, um, you'll have to email me, and I'll have to figure it out for you. Let's go to the coda. C1, B2. Circle it. You are crossing that one over. A1, E4, D3, 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 all the way across, E4, F5. Next line, E4, C3, B2, A1, E4. D1, 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 D1. You can put a little check mark in that rest if you want. E2. G4, and A5. Any questions? Yeah, Dawn, uh, Connie, at the top of the second page where you made that F, mm -hmm. I used as to what note you made into an F. The second note. The, oh, the, the a quarter E, quarter note? Quarter note E, that's at the end of the first measure. Oh, okay, I have so that. Yeah, yep, so it would be. F E D. E yeah. F E D. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, anything else? It's a wonderful song. So that would be E and that, that same line there. I'm, I'm, you're breaking uh -huh. up on me here a bit. Okay. Um, top it's of the page a... two, it says an E uh -huh. or E5. F5, I'm sorry. Yep. And then next E is a four. Yes. And, and the then, then the D was a three. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's I think it. I got that. You got and it. A moment. And would you go over uh, the coda too? The coda? Oh, I'm sorry. No, the, re the rest, uh, if you would give me the rest of line two, or li line one on page two. Okay. Um, the rest of it, the F, the G, and the A can be any three fingers you want. I used F2. G3 and A4, but those three notes kind of stand on their own. So, you know, if you wanted to use one, two, and three, or three, four, and five, doesn't really matter. Just three okay. fingers in a row. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> don't, don't excuse me, a small question. Okay, okay Cheryl. Would that be so important, but the first notes of the first line would be E, F, 
E and do you eliminate this next first E of the first measure? The E, the first E of the first measure for when? Now I'm on the second page, first line. Yes, second page. Uh huh. The first E, that dotted, is a dotted half note. That's your fourth finger. Then Cross F. out the E quarter note, beat four, and change it to an F in Perfect. that first space. Mm -hmm. Then get a five. Then the next measure is E four, D three. Oh, there's a knee again. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Third line, page two, second. Okay. Uh, uh, second measure? Second measure, yeah. Okay, C3, B2, A1, E4. Got it, okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I got it all now, sort of. All right. Well, you know where to come. You know who to ask if, you, if you're still struggling with this or any part of it. And like I said, I'm not fingering. I'm not putting fingering on the, the insert. But um, if you need it and once you get it, please feel free to email me and I'll, I'll put it in for you. It's not that big of a deal. I just didn't okay. want to make it look too busy. Would you be able to play it all again? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Would, would you be able to, do you have enough time to play it one more time? Absolutely. I would love to hear it, then I can think insert. Absolutely, yeah, this is, this is such a pretty song. All right, one more time. song yes it's wonderful to hear it again because i notice everything now the first time is i can't notice everything but then after you explain it it's great you can just see it mm -hmm. and yep. hear it yep that's true that's very true <laughs>
Yep, and you don't don't worry, you don't have to play it perfectly. This is not a song where you play for perfection. You play it because it sounds nice and it makes you feel good. You play for fun. So, yeah, don't ever worry about playing it perfectly. Because it's your song. You can make it whatever you want. <laughs> All right, you guys are so awesome. Thank you so like, much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Don. I, I discovered so something much. here, Don. What's that, David? Oh, no. What'd you discover? David? Don, yeah, I've discovered something on this uh, during this session. I have an audience. I have a, I'm looking out my front door window here uh -huh. and I have a brand new family of mockingbirds oh, and a brand new name. Wow. <laughs> oh, how very cool is that? And uh, I have an audience. It's, uh, yeah. and they seem to like it. Yeah. <laughs> What a wonderful thing. Yeah. Brenda, did you have a question? I can't go yes. out that front door anymore. One. Okay, Brenda, Brenda has a question. I think Connie has a question. I was wondering about the placement of the presets. Um, you've got like three of them. Mm -hmm. So like A1 would be at the, just starting. Yep, A1, A1 is just starting with no duet. And, and then you're using it until you get to the violin part. Correct. And then the violin is the second one. And then add so that would be A2 mm -hmm. would be the violin. Yep. And then for then the I third the verse. And did A3. Mm -hmm. Third verse is A3. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Good question, Brenda. Thank you. Okay. Go. Connie. Yeah, uh, where am I supposed to find a contempo uh, folk or whatever you said? I don't see it on Marquee. It's, I think it's on under rock basic folk. Basic folk, okay, all right. You find uh, it? Uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find it under rock, because I can't remember exactly where it is. Yeah. I I got it. Thanks. Got it. Okay. Yep. It's basic folk. Yep. Right. It's the same one. <laughs> Preset zero, you said, right? Preset, Preset zero. zero is the one I like. Vintage zero. Yes. Okay. Vintage. But that's okay. that, that guitar flute combination, which is so pretty. Okay. Great. All right. Don. You guys are awesome. Thank okay, bye you. Bye-bye. Go to the beach. Have a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs>